In this video, we are going to explore uh, the first major piece of our rear foot elevated split squat exercise, RFESS. Uh, now, where this exercise fits into your athlete development is that uh, early in your programming, we introduce um, concepts like a static squat, a flat static split squat, walking lunges, either forward, backward, a little bit side to side, but nothing truly loaded, nothing heavy, heavy, heavy. Uh, once we've gone through uh, a phase or two of those exercises, maybe introduced you some load with the walking lunge, we then move you to our RFVSS exercise. And this represents really the first major jump towards a strength exercise on a single leg variation. And so this is something that uh, you're going to have in your programming uh, with different rep schemes, different variations, different volumes, different things because it is such an important piece and because it does provide us with so much in terms of athletic development. Um, so what I'll do is I'll quickly demonstrate the exercise for you. We'll talk about some of the basic technical items and then we'll start to break down the major flaws and a couple other pieces in our other videos. So I'll start with the body weight uh, format. But essentially what I'm looking to do is set up with rear foot elevated. So exactly the title. I've set myself um, in a length and width, which is very close, or let's say identical, to the concept, concepts that we talked about in our static split squat or our lunge. So we want to make sure that our width is hip uh, distance apart, and we want to make sure that our length roughly allows for a 90 degree angle on this front leg. So from here, setting up the foot, I'm going to do airplane arms just to start. Okay, so what are we looking at here? The, the reason that the rear foot elevated variation is so good for us is that it forces us to truly start training in a single leg variation. And what I mean by that is the leg that's on the ground has the capacity to push really hard. The leg that's on the bench has been put in a position or an angle that is now effectively weaker. It cannot do very much. Even if you just think about it for yourself, how hard can you push into a bench using your toes? Not very much. So basically what we're doing is trying to figure out a way to cut this leg off so that 80, 90, 100% of your effort in this exercise is driven or created by this front leg. And so once again, it basically is a position where it is only single leg generating force and we're using the back leg really just for balance and control. So while I perform this again, now I want you to think of it not as, you know, in the variation of the way you've seen it, let's say the walking lunge. I want you to truly think of it as if I'm doing 90% of the work here and this leg is very soft. Now if you're watching really closely, you might have noticed a very subtle thing that I played with there. Now, what I did is I actually took my foot off the bench on the descent. Now, I do not want you to do this. I definitely do not want you to do this. But it's, the purpose of it was to show you that by taking my foot off, I was actually putting 100% of the work into this leg. By making this leg essentially weightless, I was forcing my body to do all the work on the descent and then the ascent from here. Just one thing, continuing to push that pressure to this leg. So just, I, I know I'm hammering this concept, but this is your true first experience on single leg strength. And we start in the body weight, like no load, but then very quickly we start to get into light dumbbells. And we continue to reinforce that the front leg should be doing the work and the back leg should be doing very little. So with the technique, let's talk about how do we keep this back foot doing as little as possible. And the ideal position is to do what we call laces down versus toes. And so when we're here, even just for yourself, think about you can push really hard into the bench this way. You cannot push really hard into the bench that way. So we go laces down just to remove that extra pressure and reforce this leg. Now, uh, some athletes who let's say struggle with some ankle uh, mobility or flexibility, this might be too much for them. We can take that on a case-by-case -case basis. 
Ideally, we can work towards a way for this to be comfortable and capable for you, but let's, let's approach that when we get there. But we go toes, to, uh, sorry, laces down, toes pointing away, so that that foot is soft, so I can load that front leg up. So, let's now talk about how we fold. Now, we want to approach this exercise essentially like a back squat. What I mean by that is we want you to fold as if you were doing a back squat. So mentally start to think, okay, if I've got that bar on my back, I'm pushing the bum back, and I'm keeping that shin roughly vertical. From here to here. We are looking to fold the exact same way in this exercise. So now kind of mentally take that checklist. What would I do in this sense? i push my bum back, keeping that shin straight. Push the bum back, keep the shin straight. 